Christy here from version of YouTube when I was having a little bit of moving the phone issue <laughs> right now. Um, but I just wanted to jump in really quickly because I wanted to um, talk to you about eating fat for satiety. So the ketogenic diet is a perfect example of a diet where there's a 75% um, 75 of your macros comes from fat and you know, there's kind of two driving forces behind that. One is that fat, when you consume fat, you can um, control your blood sugar levels a little bit longer and it makes you feel fuller longer. And the other one is just really about trying to prevent the consumption of a lot of carbohydrates so that you can be in what's called a fat burning state. Well, for weight loss purposes, a ketogenic diet may not be the best diet, and here's why. If you have excess weight to lose, regardless of your size, okay, we have what's called like a personal fat volume. And basically what it is, is our bodies store the fat in order to be able to burn them later. Well, if we have not been exercising as much as we should, moving as much as we should, or eating the foods that we should, what ends up happening is we end up storing this fat that we're consuming and we're not burning it off, which I'm sure you're familiar with. But here's what you may not be familiar with. What ends up happening is we continue to store the fat. And we get to this place where we end up with so much fat in our body that there's no more cells to store the fat. And that's when we get to this place called personal uh, fat volume, okay? This threshold where your body can't store any more fat. And here's the thing. If your body has completely filled itself with fat storage, there's no room then to store any of the carbohydrates, okay? So what ends up happening is there's a spillage of fat that can't get stored into the body that ends up staying in the bloodstream. Then there's the carbohydrates, which get broken down into sugar. And then that gets, uh, that stays in the bloodstream as well. It's not being buffered out. So you end up with this metabolic syndrome where you start to notice weight gain. Um, you start to notice your circumference in and around your waist starts to get bigger. You're, you're, you become a little bit disproportionately um, set where you're more like apple shaped and you end up noticing if you actually get blood work done that your triglyceride levels have gone up, that your cholesterol levels have gone up. Those are the first signs that you're starting to hit that peak personal fat volume. And that actually happens before we end up with excess blood, uh, sugar in our bloodstream. So we don't become pre-diabetic first. We actually start to hit that threshold of personal fat volume first. And why this is important to you is because oftentimes we spend a lot of time talking about, um, you know, pre-diabetes, diabetes as it relates to our intake of carbohydrates. And then we turn to diets like ketogenic diets as a means to um, reverse all of that. But if your fat stores have maximized and there's no more storage, then consuming more fat isn't going to get stored in the body. It's going to continue to remain in the blood. And we end up just causing um, more health damage, inflammation, et cetera, et cetera. So there are tricks to address this um, that certainly I can teach you when you work with me uh, when we learn more about your epigenetics. But I just need you to understand that it's not so simple just to go to a diet like a ketogenic diet uh, when you're looking for weight loss because chances are uh, eating fat is only going to precipitate more illness uh, down the road, not less. Anyway, here's a showing up for you. Something to think about. Have yourself a fantastic rest of your week. Bye.